Hello again, this is Fiendish with DimensionTouring.com and we're back with our Tinker Tools updated video guides and this time we're going to talk about the basics of the move function. Uh, as you can see we have absolute, relative, and a grayed out local axis box. Absolute means this is its position in the dimension. If I click these little buttons here, that's basically recording that spot. It's the spot where all these arrows can join. It's the selection point. Now when we start talking about multiple items, like say if I select all these poles here, oops, all these poles here, now it's pretty much a center point because it's the center of all these these poles. But for this item here, it is the selection point because it's not exactly in the center. Um, it, it's kind of at the, it's in the middle in the Z and the X, but on, or in the Z and the, in the Y, but uh, on the X, it's kind of on the, the bottom side. Anyways, absolute means this is its absolute position in this dimension. Relative means I want to take this and I want to move it a certain amount. Uh, and local axes, local axes is something that if your dimension is off axis, uh, which is most of them, and there's say you're working on a stone flask and there's a you reskin in the building so stone flask is like 20 some degrees off axis so you want to move everything on that axis. It'll also work for things like this, this bay window right here. Uh, we need to make wall wall thicknesses fit basically this frame. So I could have just copied and pasted because there's always more than one way to do things. I could have built this whole thing here and then copied and pasted that entire window set. But instead, I just set the framework so we could use this as an example for a local axis move. And then also with absolute, we'll go with absolute here. One of the things that you can use absolute movement for is say I want to, I've got these poles here. I want to set up like a row of columns on a, on a wall. So I've selected this point. Now I've got two more poles selected. I'm going to copy those and paste them. Okay. Now one thing that you want to do before you move, if you're moving multiple items, is make sure that that as group is checked. Otherwise, what you get is it's going to move both poles to that spot. And they're stacked on top of each other. So, go through, we'll go through it one more time by, this, by the numbers. First step is to select everything and then hit these radio buttons. Now I'm going to hit, I'm going to copy these two poles. I'm going to click absolute and as group and then move. Now then, if I want to do the same thing there, and again here, And now you have a perfectly spaced wall, uh, maybe with some columns or decorations or anything that you want to add. So that pretty much covers an absolute move. Relative move. Okay, so I've got this. Now when I click relative, it's going to hold all of the settings that I was using in absolute, but it's going to clear them out for a different function. So say I'm making this and now I want to move it 
based off of the OPSA calculator that we used last time. Oh, because it's not. There we go. Now I'm going to put them both at max and they line up just right. And then a lot of times what you can do is um, say you get a thickness the same but you don't offset or as with some textures you don't offset for enough. Uh, Where did my little window go? I'm going to get rid of this and I just want to eliminate some flicker so I'm just going to raise it one. So back to local axes. <clears throat> Excuse me. So as you notice there is no as group function for a relative move and I could try to pretty much move this whole thing but based off of thicknesses and scales and selection points um, it's probably not going to work out well for me. So I want to do a, just a little bitty increment move. Actually I want to copy that before I move it just in case something bad happens which I almost am certain will. Now let's and there we go. Looks like something I didn't. Okay, so that was the wrong way. So let's try it this way. That's moving it that way. Okay. So now I'm going to try. All I'm doing is I'm copying and pasting these two. Oops these two squares right here because all I want to do is even out this thickness. Say this is a bay window I want to make everything to where it's to the frame and since they're squares I can move them both and whoa that was not right. Okay. Now with the local axes there's going to be some trial and error um, there we go. And that did it almost perfectly. So we'll come over here. Copy and paste again. Now in theory it should go the opposite direction of the last two. Yep. There we go. It's a quick and easy way to make a bay window if that was something that you were interested in. So again let's rotate this so we have a bigger sample field to work from. I could use the offset calculator to uh, figure up, you know, how far I want to go. But if I don't need to go the full distance, then I can try and I would again, there we go. Now it's moving all. in an incremental movement. And again with no as group thing um, <clears throat> your mileage may vary. Um, I know I haven't had a lot of good luck moving a group of items in a relative move on a local axis. There we go. 
it put that center point um, at the last specified one and it kept it with the same degree of rotation. At any rate, move is one of the basic things I've, as always, I recommend, you know, experimenting. Um, see what works best for you. If you like using move, if you like doing it by hand, which sometimes is faster, um, especially for really small movements. But if you like precision, like if I was building this, this piece right here, I might go with like a 100, a, a 0.1 move and then a 0 0.05 and then walk it in doing like point, point 0.5 at a time. So, I mean, that pretty much covers the move function. Uh, as always, you can hit me up in game. I'm Baradera at Greybriar, or what you call it at Greybriar. Or you can use the handy little guide that's in here. Um, there's also written guides on the DTC, and I don't believe I covered uh, local axis moves there. So until next time, when we'll be covering the Alphabet uh, typewriter, uh, happy building.